assume you're Sorry, I was just talking to my director before I knew we'd be around. Uh, hi, I'm Otto Penzler, and uh, I'm at the Mysterious Bookshop in Manhattan, down in Tribeca. And uh, this is our weekly uh, talk show about uh, collecting rare books. And uh, I have to say, this week is the best, that the best books available that I've had uh, on any of these shows and indeed have had in the store for a very long time. The, the, the subject today is Ellery Queen. Now, I know that some people who watch this show are uh, very sophisticated collectors. Uh, they understand the difference between a first printing and a first impression and a first edition and, and all those things. They know how to tell first editions from reprints. They know that when uh, they go online and a, and a a bookseller says, oh, it's a Grosset and Dunlap first edition. Oh, it's a Burt first edition. World Publishing first edition. They know that they're not, that they're reprints and the bookseller trying to sell these books doesn't know what he's doing. Um, but there are other people who really don't know a whole, who watch this show, um, and I hear from people so I know that they don't really know a whole lot about collecting. They're more interested in hearing about the author uh, stories about the author and things like that. They were interested in the books, but not necessarily dedicated hardcore collectors. This show today is really about hardcore collectors. Uh, these books are very expensive, they're very rare, and they're, it's just spectacular to be able to talk about them. Uh, Ellery Queen, almost everybody knows who Ellery Queen is. You've read the books, you know what a significant figure Ellery Queen is in the history of American detective fiction. In fact, Anthony Boucher once called him, said Ellery Queen is the American detective story. Uh, Ellery Queen, though, for those few of you who don't know who he is, is a combination of two cousins. They lived in Brooklyn, Manfred B. Lee and Frederick Danae. Uh, both of them contributed to all of the books, mainly Fred Danae plotted and uh, Manny Lee wrote the wrote the uh, the books he, he is a better writer and Fred was a better plotter uh, and they had a great collaboration sometimes they switched because of various reasons uh, but that was their standard practice uh, so when they started the when they started writing the biggest best-selling mystery writer in America was Philo Vance, uh, was S.S. Van Dyne writing the Philo Vance stories. And when they wrote their first uh, book, The Roman Hat Mystery, they kind of based Ellery Queen on a Philo Vance type character. Uh, he was sophisticated, a little smug, uh, liked to show off his knowledge, and so on. Uh, and that, but they became uh, very quickly became very successful doing that. Their first book was the Roman Hat Mystery. Roman Hat Mystery in Dust Jacket is extremely rare. I'm going to show you some rare books now. The early books by, uh, by, the El by Ellery Queen were published by Stokes, Frederick Stokes, a company that you really hardly ever know about or hear about these days. But their first editions are easy to tell. The date on the title page corresponds to the date on the copyright page. And the there is no indication of first edition. They don't say first edition. They don't have a number line. They don't have an A the way Scrivener's does. They don't have anything. If it's a reprint, they show that it's a reprint. Now I want to show you the condition. You know, in real estate, the, the great cliche is the most important thing is location, location, location. In collecting, sometimes the three most important things are condition, condition, condition. And look at this copy. It's spectacular. And look at the dust jacket. It looks like a facsimile jacket because it's in such great shape. Now, I'm gonna show you something else. I had a copy in my collection. My collection went up for auction at Heritage Galleries. 
my copy was inscribed, this one is not. But here it is, take a look close up. Look at the top of the spine, there's a little chip. This really annoys me that somebody had a better copy, a better jacket than mine. My copy sold for $40,000. It was 32,000 plus 25% buyer's fee, which totaled $40,000. Just for the crazies out there, like as I was, this copy is less than half. It's 18500 I have a second copy in this collection. Now, condition, 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 I want to remind you. It's not bad, but you see the spine has a little wear. It's a little rubbed. It's not quite as nice. It doesn't have a dust jacket. The jacket that, um, that is on here looks like the right one, but it's not. It's a Grosset and Dunlap jacket, and somebody cleverly tore off the imprint on the bottom so that you can't see that it's a Grosset and Dunlap jacket, which is a reprint, although it gives it away on the back panel. Now this copy, because it doesn't have a jacket, is a lot less expensive, even though Look, it's signed on the title page. And there's the date, Roman numerals, which is what Frederick Stokes did. And there's the copyright page showing that it is, in fact, a first edition. And this copy is 2000. The second book, uh, although most people think the Roman hat mystery is the great rarity, the, which it is, but the greater rarity is the French powder mystery, the second book. Now, when I worked for Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine, I worked for Fred for a couple of years. I wrote two columns in Ellery Queen Magazine. Um, one was just a book page. It was about books. It was occasionally reviewed, but it was really interesting things, I'd like to think, in the world of mystery fiction. And the other column, was uh, uh, interview, an interview with a major writer, which is how I got to meet people like Ross McDonald, Ross McDonald, Eric Ambler, and several others. Well, one day Fred invited my wife and me to his home for dinner, and uh, Fred was a great collector. Uh, his collection was one of the most famous collections of mystery fiction, and uh, he had his books in his bookcase and as the dinner was winding down over coffee, he said, is there anything you would like to see? And I said, yeah, I would like to see your French powder mystery and dust jacket. And he said, not the Roman hat. I said, I have a, a copy of the Roman hat mystery. I've never seen a French powder mystery and jacket. So we went in to the living room and he pulled it out and he showed it to me. I said, okay. The only copy I've ever seen in my life, by the way, is that copy. Years later, Richard Danay, Fred's son, inherited the collection. And uh, Richard Danay is a customer in my store. And he, and I said, uh, you've got the only French powder in dust jacket that I've ever seen. He said, no, there was no copy in the collection. I said, yes, there was. I saw it. And he said, no, you, you're probably mixing it up with another book. I said, Richard, I'm not mixing it up. I collect Ellery Queen very avidly. I know that book. And he said, if there were anybody else telling me this, I wouldn't believe it. Last year, he won a lawsuit. Uh, those books were taken, some of those books were removed from the collection illegally. And he got back the books that were, had been taken from that collection, including a French powder mystery in dust jacket. Now, I'm showing you a copy of the French powder mystery in a dust jacket. However, down here, there was a second printing of the French powder mystery. And on the jacket, it said, second printing. You don't see it here. Somebody, no idea who, I don't know when it happened, scraped it off, probably using sandpaper or something, so it looks 
perfectly clean down there, but it's not. This is a fraudulent jacket. It's a second printing jacket. Uh, if it were the true jacket, this would be a more expensive book than the Roman hat mystery because it's rarer. Um, again, it, the book is indeed a first edition. There's the Roman numerals on the, on the title page and no indication of reprint on the copyright page. Uh, but I will say, look at this copy. It is a fabulous copy of the book, which is extremely scarce, even without a jacket. Uh, with, with the reprint jacket, um, it's, it's, it's still rare, but not as rare. As a result, it's priced at $2,000. Laid in, by the way, is an autograph from Ellery Queen, but it's not connected to the book. It could be laid into any Ellery Queen book. It just happens to be laid into this one, but it's included with that book. Here's a French, here's another copy of the French Powder Mystery. This one, I'm gonna show you again. There's the title page with the Roman numerals of when it was published. And as I said, Frederick Stokes, re, when they reprint, they show you on the title page. There it is. All the information you need. This copy, so it's a reprint. It's got a nice inscription. And it's got a Grosset and Dunlap jacket. And the reason, the only reason um, people put later jackets on is to make it look nice. And it does, it looks better. It's the same front, the same panel. The back panel is the same. They, they really did everything that they could to make it look like the, uh, like the original. And uh, so it's, it's nice. It's chipped, it's not a great jacket. It's not the right jacket anyway, but still, it's a nice copy. It's got that nice inscription, but because it's a reprint, it's only $850. Now the third book, The Dutch Shoe Mystery. I had a great copy of this in my collection also. I'll show you. There's, my, there's the copy that I had with a tremendous inscription. And this sold for $17,500, 14 plus the 25% buyer's commission. Now, this jacket is almost as good. Got a little chipping at the bottom. This is the, this is the third Ellery Queen. Look at the condition of the book. It's dazzling. It's like new. And remember, this book is 90 years old. So it's remarkable that it stayed in this kind of condition. Um, this copy also is signed on the title page. And there's the, the new Roman numerals. And again, showing you the copyright page where there's no reprint listed. Um, Again, this is about half the price of the copy that sold at auction. It's eighty-five hundred. And here's a really nice copy of, of the book again. You can see the book is in beautiful condition. No jacket. This is annoying. I'll put it together again later. But it is signed, it's Ellery Queen, and this time he identifies uh, which person signed it. There are books here signed by, by Fred. There are a few signed by Manny Lee, who didn't sign as many copies. And actually there are some signed by both, which is pretty uncommon. Uh, but because it doesn't have a jacket, uh, this book is only 1250. So the jacket, as you can see, 8,500 as opposed to 1,250, the dust jacket is much rarer than the book. Because it was common in uh, the 20s, 30s, 40s for people to take their books home and throw away the jackets. Because uh, they liked the way a book looked on the shelf just as, as, as it looked. And so 
that's why jackets are so rare. And also they're much more uncommon. Now here's an interesting, uh, here's another copy of the Greek coffin. Did I already show you my Greek? Oh, wait a minute. I got that out of order. Sorry. Here's a beautiful copy of the Greek coffin. Again, look at, I mean, the, I haven't seen jackets like, aside from my books, uh, which I no longer have. I still call them my books, although they're not. They're somebody else's now. Uh, I haven't seen books in this condition in 20 or 30 years or more. Look at this. It's like new. Nowhere, anywhere on the spine or anywhere else. And look at the condition of the jacket. I mean, it's really just a remarkable. Um, so this is the fourth book, or is it? Yeah. Um, again, there's the date on the title page, copyright page with nothing on it. But what's cool with this also is it laid into it was a little pamphlet that Stokes produced that says how to read an Ellery Queen mystery. <laughs> and there's facsimile uh, signature in the back. This is a beautiful copy of the book. Um, it's 3,000. So here's a copy without dust jacket. Not such a great copy. It's got a real wear at the corner there is badly damaged, unfortunately. But it's a second printing. And I'll show you again. There's the copyright page with the second printing notice. But what's interesting about this is it's inscribed to the famous comedian and radio personality, H. Allen Smith, signed faithfully Ellery Queen, and that's Manfred Lee's signature, who, uh, it's a little bit different from Fred Danae's signature, and much more uncommon. Uh, Manny Lee did not go out and about as much as Fred did. Fred was very active in the mystery community, member of the Mystery Writers of America, was a member of the Baker Street Irregulars, and it was common for people to see him there and get books signed. Uh, so that's an uncommon. Second printing, uh, not a great copy. It's only two hundred dollars, even though it's uh, even though it's got the signature. And here's here's another. This is really nice. This is another yet one more copy. Again, no jacket. Pretty good condition. It's not quite as perfect as the dust jacket copy, but it's pretty nice. But it is a first. And this is interesting. It's inscribed, as you can see, by Frederick Danae who also signed it, Danny. I've never seen that before. This shows to me that it's, this shows me that it's a very early inscription because his real name was not Frederick Dane. It was a pseudonym. His real name was Daniel Nathan. And so this is signed by Dane. So obviously it's to a close friend or family member. I don't know who Cheryl is. Uh, some expert out there I'm sure does know. Uh, and because it's a nice copy, it's got that nice inscription, and it's a first, it's $1,000. The Egyptian Cross Mystery. Now, this is a very, very scarce book. And once, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but this collector really understood how to collect. Condition, condition, condition. Look at this, it's like new. And look at the jacket. The jacket is price clipped. Uh, apart from that, look at it. Now, price clipping, there are flaws that books have or that jackets have that really upset me, and I would avoid them, like broken hinges. I never liked broken hinges. I didn't like a lot of wear on a book. Price clip jackets never bothered me because it was so common in the, in, uh, until recently, for uh, bookshops, better, like high quality bookshops, like Brentano's and Scribner's and Doubleday in New York, where they had a scissor 
A pair of scissors right on the desk as you checked out, they would open the book and clip the price because they assumed if you were buying a hardcover book, it was a gift. And so they removed the price. So that it was so commonplace that it never bothered me. But this is a spectacular copy. And look at, look at this as, um, inscription. Signed by both Ellery Queen and Manfred B. Lee on a beautiful first edition. Very, very rarely you see that. Uh, and as a result, it's $10,000. Here's something unusual. I have a lot of these. A lot of these came in the collection, but I'm only gonna show you one because we're, we're starting to run late, I know, and I, I, I should talk a little faster. Here's the first English edition. And these are extremely rare because in, uh, in, in England, when World War II broke out, there were gigantic paper drives that people would contribute to. Magazines and books went into these paper drives. And uh, these, these uh, Golands dust jackets, these yellow dust jackets, which I'm sure you've seen on many, many other books, they used them, uh, the same things, into the 70s. Uh, and this is the first edition, the first British edition, because it's got a seven and six on the spine. Later printings were two, two six, two shillings and sixpence, and those were reprints. So this is a true first in a really nice jacket. It's got wear at the top of the spine, but apart from that, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, I think they're very rare, but you know, if you're collecting an American author, I'm one of those people who likes to follow the flag and the true first is the American, uh, and then the British uh, first came later. Uh, so even though it's a, it's a very rare book and a terrific condition, uh, it's only $500. How much more should I be doing here? Because we're, I know we're running late, I'll talk faster. But I just love these books so much. By the way, we're gonna do a second one next week because I have much more to show you, much more to tell you including the books that he wrote as, that they wrote as Barnaby Ross and some unusual, very unusual items. These are the rare, the rarest of the rare. Uh, the others uh, are interesting, but and, as well as rare. Here's the Spanish Cape mystery. One more time, look at the condition. Just fabulous. And look at the jacket. Just, it's just impossible to find these find books in these condition. And signed on the title page. And of course, again, the copyright page with no indication of a reprint. And this is expensive. What is it? 4500 It's less than some of the other books because it's just it's not quite as rare. It's rare, uh, but not quite as rare. And uh, one more Golands edition. This is one of the only times that Golands had an illustrated jacket instead of one of those all yellow jackets. They were all yellow on the back, but they actually used an illustration for this. And again, a terrific condition. Uh, very, very hard to find these books in any condition, but in nice condition, it's especially hard. And again, because it's a British edition and not the true first, uh, it's only 500. Chinese orange mystery, yet another Ellery Queen. Oh, and what's wrong with this one? Oh, I see. Um, oh, let me get you, let me show you the good book. First, the good book. This is uh, first edition. Again, you know, I, I, I know it gets boring if you're not a serious collector yourself, but look at the condition. And look at the jacket. Again, the usual first, I won't bother showing it to you. Uh, it's, it's not as rare as every, as, the earliest, the earliest of the early books, 
but it's still extremely uncommon and very uncommon in this condition. There's a card signed by Manny Lee laid in, uh, but again, it's not terribly, it's not very important. It's 2,500 because of the condition. You can find a cheaper copy, but not in that, not in that condition. Here's a copy, and I call this without a dust jacket. It is a first, and it's in pretty nice condition, little faded on the spine. This is a facsimile jacket, and it says, as it says on the top. If you're buying a book in a, in a rare old early book, and you find the condition really beautiful in every way, but missing something at the top, it means that somebody has clipped off the facsimile line. If it looks too good to be true, it is. Uh, this is only $125. Siamese twin. One more. Again, look at the condition. It's like new. It's like new. There are books that we get from Random House today that aren't in this good condition. But again, this is a great inscription. Look at this. Signed by both. Fred Danae and Manny Lee. And uh, again, because of the great condition and the great autographs and so on, this is 4,000. American Gun. This is the last one I'll show today. Again, condition, condition, condition. Great jacket. I won't show you. Take my word. It's a first edition. You'll you'll be able to see it. Uh, this is fifteen hundred because of the condition. That's enough for today. Oh well, I might as well finish with the last American gun. This is a first edition, and it is inscribed, but it's only a good to very good copy without a jacket, um, and so it's it's reasonable. It's three seventy five. That's enough. Just by the way, to show you if you if you if these books interest you and you can't afford ten thousand dollars, we're reissuing all of these or a large number of them in the American Mystery Classics series. More next week. Thanks for thanks for watching.